In this video, we'll discuss some of the common features associated with preferred stock, as well as some basic preferred stock transactions. Preferred stock is often referred to as a hybrid security because it has features associated with both debt as well as features associated with common stock. First, one of the features that preferred stock has is a preference to dividends. So preferred shareholders will get paid dividends prior to common stockholders. Yet, unlike debt, preferred dividends do not have to be paid. It doesn't lead to financial distress if a company misses a preferred uh, dividend payment, unlike missing an interest payment or a coupon payment on debt. But like debt, those preferred dividends are fixed at a percentage of the par value of the preferred shares. Preferred shareholders have a preference to assets in the event of liquidation. They stand in line behind debt holders, but will get paid their par value prior to common shareholders receiving assets in the event of liquidation. Another common feature associated with preferred stock is it can often be converted into shares of common stock. For instance, one share of preferred stock might be convertible into four or five shares of common stock. Of course, preferred shareholders would only do this if the value of the common shares they were to receive were greater than the value of the preferred stock. Oftentimes, preferred stock has a call option where it can be retired at the option of the corporation. Otherwise, preferred stock, like common stock, has no maturity, which of course is different than debt that does have a maturity. Like debt, preferred shares do not include voting rights. Another important feature related to preferred stock is whether the dividends are cumulative or non-cumulative. Recall, Companies don't have to pay preferred shareholders their dividends. Yet, if the preferred shares are cumulative in nature, that means that the company will have to make up any missed dividend payments before they can pay dividends to common shareholders. Non-cumulative means that even if we miss a dividend payment to preferred shareholders in a particular year, the next year we don't have to make up those missed dividends before paying dividends to common shareholders. Sometimes another sweetener thrown on to preferred shares, again, to entice investors to buy those shares at higher prices or lower yields, is a participation clause. Participating preferred shareholders are entitled to their, say, fixed 4 or 5% dividend before any dividends are paid to common shareholders, and then will share in any equally in any dividends that are paid after that. Finally, another feature that's sometimes associated or found with commons or preferred stock is a redemption feature. The preferred stock is redeemable. That means, like debt, it has a fixed maturity. At a certain point in time, the preferred shares will be retired. Now again, unlike debt, where we have to pay the interest payments, on preferred stock, we don't have to pay the dividends. But in this case, like debt, the preferred shares would have a set maturity where the company has to return to the investors their initial par value. This is important from an accounting perspective because redeemable preferred shares are considered a liability. It's classified as debt on the balance sheet rather than equity. And in general, we'll find corporations can attach whatever preferences or restrictions on their preferred shares that they want, as long as they don't violate the state laws in which they are incorporated. We'll see that the journal entries associated with recording preferred stock issues are similar to common stock. Bizarre issues 1,000 shares of $10 par value preferred stock for $12 cash per share. They would make the following entry. Of course, we're going to debit cash for $120,000. We will credit preferred stock for the par value times the number of shares, and then any excess is recorded in a separate paid in capital in excess of par for preferred stock. Let's go ahead and take a look at some more examples. These examples will deal primarily with dividends for cumulative preferred stock as well as convertible preferred stock. We're told that the Pearl Corporation has 11,200 shares of $100 par value, 8% preferred stock. 
and 48,300 shares of $10 par value common stock outstanding on December 31st, 2020. And we're asked to consider or answer questions in the following independent situations. First, if the preferred stock is cumulative and dividends were last paid on the preferred stock on December 31st, 2017, what are the dividends in arrears that should be reported on the December 31st, 2020 balance sheet? Well, the dividends in arrears will be the dividends for 2018, 2019, as well as 2020. So we owe three years worth of dividends. So 11,200 shares times the $100 par value times the 8% dividend yield times three years. Now, in terms of this being reported on the balance sheet, it's not a liability for the company. So it's not reported on the balance sheet. Of course, we'll disclose it in the footnotes of our financial statements. Now let's walk through a couple examples related to the conversion of stock. If the preferred stock is convertible into seven shares of $10 par value common stock and investors convert 3,600 shares, what's our required entry for the conversion assuming that the preferred stock was issued at par. If the stock was issued at par, we need to remove the preferred stock from our books at that par value. We have no additional paid in capital to remove, just the preferred stock. So 3,600 shares times $100 per share. Since each share can be converted into seven shares of common stock, we will issue um, 3,600 uh, shares of common stock times seven, and we have, which is 25,200 shares, and the common stock has a par value of $10 per share. So we will credit common stock for uh, $252,000. Debits don't equal credits, so we will credit additional paid in capital for our common stock for the difference in the amount of $108,000. Now let's consider the same situation, except we're going to assume that the preferred stock was issued at $108 per share. So the first thing we need to do, again, when the 3,600 shares are converted, we need to remove them from our books. So we will debit preferred stock for $360,000. That's the 3,600 shares times $100 per share. Now the stock was issued at 108, so we had $8 per share of additional paid in capital. So we will want to debit additional paid in capital on preferred stock for $28,800. That's again, $8 per share times 3,600. Now we have issued, again, 25,200 shares of common stock at $10 par value. So we credit uh, common stock for $252,000. Debits don't equal credits, and our plug is to additional paid in capital on our common stock in the amount of $136,800. In terms of a balance sheet presentation, how would we have presented the preferred stock on our balance sheet before any uh, conversion took place? We would have had preferred stock in the amount of uh, $1,120,000. That's the 11,200 shares at $100 per share. And then we had the capital in excess of par in the amount of 89,600, which is the 11,200 shares times the $8 per share that we issued the preferred stock above par value. Finally, we have one more dividend question. We're told that Marigold Corporation has outstanding 9,700 shares of $100, 6% preferred stock, and 61,000 shares of $10 par value common stock. The preferred stock was issued in January 2019, and no dividends were declared in 2019 or 2020. Now in 2021, Marigold declares a cash dividend of $319,000. So the question is, how much dividends will we pay to preferred shareholders as well as common shareholders? We're told to assume that the preferred shares are cumulative. So preferred shareholders will be entitled to missed dividends before the common shareholders get any. So how much will preferred shareholders get? They will receive 
$174,600 in dividends. That's the 9,700 shares times the $100 par value times the 6% dividend rate times three years. And then the difference between the 319 that we pay in dividends in total and the 174,600 will go to common shareholders. They will be entitled to $144,400 in dividends.